learned already that names don't constitute knowledge, that they're knowing the name of something. That's caused me a certain trouble since, because I refuse to learn the name of anything. So when someone comes in and says, uh, you got any explanation for the Fitzclonan experiment? I says, what, what, what's that? He says, you know, that the long-lived K meson disintegrates into two pies. Oh, oh, yes, now I know. But I never know the names of things. What he forgot to tell me was that the knowing the names of things is useful if you want to talk to somebody else. <laughs> so you tell him what you're talking about. But the basic principle of knowing about something rather than just knowing its name is something that you stuck to, is it? Yes, of course. It's, well, you have to learn. These are kind of disciplines in the field of science that you have to learn. That to know when you know and when you don't know and what it is you know and what it is you don't know. And it's uh, you got to be very careful not to confuse yourself. Hi guys, how are you? Mine this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macroeconomics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro and Patreon.com slash BKC, Bare Knuckle Charting. All right, so this is what I posted back on uh, September 23rd. That shit didn't look right. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're not following me on Twitter, you should. I'll occasionally I'll give you guys some free stuff. All right, so um, this was a setup right in here. Okay, and we we're looking for downside, and that's exactly what we got. We got a nice little down move, okay, and where did it stop? Exactly where the trend line was formed, okay, and then it popped. So that shouldn't have been a surprise to anybody. Um, so now this has become gray because the target was met, and then the next target now that we're going to look for uh, is all the way down here. Now, where it's going to, you know, when and where and how it's going to get down here, it's going to be like this, it's going to be like this, and, you know, nobody knows. Okay, but the next target is going to be down here. Now, like I said in the uh, in previous uh, posts, videos, whatever, the biggest threat to the market is this. Okay, uh, this, this structure right here uh, is a bearish structure, even though it's going up and it looks bullish and it all looks great. Uh, this is actually bearish, okay? And if you understand how to read charts, then, you know, you would know that. So, um, you know, you got to understand that the, the market, in order for the market, uh, for, for indices, stocks, whatever, to start going down, the economy has to go down, okay? The stock market is not going to go down until the chart is ready to go down. It just doesn't arbitrarily go down does it have you know drawdowns of course right that's not that, that's happened so many times right so you see a big drawdown like this okay that doesn't mean a recession is coming i know a lot of you people believe these things and i know you listen to these fucking perma bears and then you're going to get the perma bull say oh look i was right you know these people are idiots they're not they don't know what they're talking about don't listen to them i'm telling you don't listen to them okay you guys know me. I've been doing this for 10 years. I don't say stupid shit. Uh, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. What are you going to do about it? I don't know what the fucking future is. Neither do they. Okay? Neither do you. Neither does anybody on the on the planet. I can tell you when things are likely to happen. Just like I told you with oil, gold, Bitcoin, even stocks. All right. So, remember, the market, is, the stock market is not going to go down until it's ready to go down. And when it starts getting ready to go down, okay, then that should be a clue to you that the economy is not going to do as well going forward. Uh, and if the, you know, if the stocks are going to go down, the economy is going to go down, then, you know, things are going to get ugly. And when they do start to get ugly, okay, it takes them only a couple of months, maybe less sometimes, uh, to, go, to go down. It just keeps going down and down and down, and you saw that. Back in October, November, and December, right? Relentless selling. Now, this ended up being, uh, you know, just a, a garden variety uh, pullback, okay? But it has meaning. It didn't do it just for the fucking sake of doing it. This is a very, very large drawdown. And when you look at it and you measure it, okay, that was a 24% decline. That's huge. So while, while, while the market has made, you know, small little higher highs, that's just, that's just there to fool you, all right? That's just there to fuck with you, to make you think, oh, everything is fine. And the perma bulls be like, yeah, yeah. And then the perma bears are just, they're fucked up beyond belief, right? Because they've been wrong for so long that they're, they're scared to even say anything anymore. I mean, not that they don't, but 
it's always some kind of excuse kind of uh, uh, post that they have, you know. Well, you know, rates are, you know, going to go to zero again, and uh, the government and the Fed does this, and it's manipulated, and, you know, whatever. You know, they, they've given up, these fuckers. <laughs> they just have to make fun of the Fed and the government and everybody else. That That's what they're re- they have been resorted to, you know. They've been demolished. But anyway, um, so, yeah, the way this is setting up is, is definitely bearish. There's, there's no question about it. And that's why a few months ago I started to get bearish. And, um, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, you know, you're bearish here. Everything is fine. Yeah, well, here we are, right? Uh, we have a lower low now. And we have a head and shoulders that's formed. And this structure is definitely bearish. So we're looking for the next move down. And uh, on the economic uh, end, you know, what, what they'll tell you is, you know, there's always a part of the economy that sucks and a part of the economy that's good. Okay. And whenever bears talk, they always talk about the bad part of the economy. They never talk about the good. And then perma bulls always talk about the good part of the economy, never about the bad. Okay. So you, you end up with, it's either never good enough or everything is better than I expected. Fuck. Wow. This is amazing. This is awesome. Okay. So the promo bulls are going to tell you, ah, don't worry about it. You know, we had the PMI recession. We had an ISM. It's all bullshit. Don't worry about it. Oh, it doesn't mean anything. Nothing ever means, and nothing is ever bad for them. Okay. Uh, but at the same time with their logic, okay. When the good stuff starts to go and starts heading South, you really expect that this that has been bad is going to suddenly support the market and push it higher. You see what I'm saying? By simple logic, they're idiots because when this is really good and it starts to turn, guess what? This is going to not perform very well. (laughs) Okay. So what happens? You end up with a, a bear market. That's what happens. So do yourself a favor, stop listening to these idiots, and, uh, you know, can I be wrong? Of course I can be wrong. I don't don't know what the fucking future is. Nobody does, okay? Um, But I'm telling you that this structure, there's a lot of negativity in this this structure right now. You should be cautious. There's a lot of problems. Uh, You look at the, you know, the repo. Ah, don't worry about the repo. (laughs) It's just short term. Don't worry about it. The New York Fed fucked up, Powell sucks, government sucks, you know. Well, no, it doesn't work like that. And it got extended to October 10th, and now it's extended all the way to November 4th. And the balance sheet now is up $180 billion, And it's, you know, God knows what it's going to be by November and what it's going to look like. And then we're going to start QE. And, you know, and that's the problem. That's the problem with money printing, right? That once you start it, you can't stop. Because once you, you once you stop, once that cat is out of the bag, guess what? It's game over, and it's the same thing with socialism, right? If everybody starts going into a job guarantee, no skills required, don't worry about it, just show up, go punch a, a clock, get thirty-five thousand dollars a year, get your medical benefits, you know, go out and get a credit card if you can't pay it. Oh well, tough luck, you know. We'll just go bankrupt, and you know everything is going to be fine. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay, it, it simply doesn't work like that. You can't do it. Um, so, again, a lot of bearish signals. You got the, you know, head and shoulders here. You got a bigger head and shoulders that's probably going to form in here. Uh, you got the rising wedge. You got, you got all sorts of problems. Okay, uh, the market didn't make it all the way to the top of this channel. I can go on forever in a day. And this is probably going to be one of these very uh, few times in your life that you're going to end up seeing a top okay doesn't mean that we're not going to go higher much later and everything is going to be another you know bullish market and so forth uh, of course it will uh, eventually it's going to correct and then off we go again um, but it's, since the 80s you've seen how many recessions and tops three that's it three so <laughs> You know, trickle-down economics doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work, but it does avoid recessions, right? And by no means am I supporting trickle-down economics. I'm just saying 
But if you're going to use that logic, well, you got to go back and say, fuck, man, you know, in the past 40 years, we only had three recessions. Mm, that's pretty good. So anyway, I mean, 3.5% unemployment, lowest in 50 years, 1969. Um, you got um, more jobs and people looking for jobs. Wages were growing. They were flat yesterday, but it doesn't matter. You know, you got all these good things going on, and yet the economy is not doing what it's supposed to do, right? It's firing on all cylinders, and yet, you know, where the fuck is the growth? So why is the market going to go up exactly? You know, it's either that, you know, earnings are going to start to rise or uh, multiple is going to start to rise, right? How much are you going to pay for stocks? And I right now, I don't see both of them occurring, or I should say either of them occurring. I don't think corporate profits are going to r- rise all that much. And uh, uh, even though we do have a... Uh, a massive savings bubble, okay, Uh, what what you're ending up seeing now is that stocks are much more valuable than they were, you know, a year ago, relative to bonds, right, much more valuable, so why why isn't the market fucking screaming higher, what happened, everything is great, stocks are cheap, relative to bonds, right, money chases yield, what the fuck, why isn't it going higher? And that's what—that's the question you got to be asking yourself. Okay, why? Are earnings going to start to grow? 3.5 percent unemployment. It's not much. It's not much more room you can grow, right? Uh, multiples going to start to expand on stocks. You're going to pay more and more on multiples. I don't know. I don't think so. And then ultimately, if you're going to start selling bonds, okay, what's going to happen to interest rates? Interest rates are going to start to rise. Well, if they start to rise, then that makes stocks less valuable. So stocks should go down. You see what I'm saying? This is a very, very uh, unique time uh, in economics and in um, in the stock market. And I'm telling you, it doesn't look good. Okay, um, doesn't mean I can be I can be wrong, but it just doesn't look good. And the charts are supporting. Uh, that thesis right now okay let's continue on let's take a look at the S&P 500 Uh, same kind of structure rising wedge came bounced Uh, so now this is uh, uh, this target is bent as well we're going to look for the next target it's going to be all the way down here somewhere which is a double support area Um, so we'll see what happens with that Russell 200 uh, 2000 Russell 2000, uh, risk on, uh, as you can see, never recovered since December, okay? Uh, so usually the way this works is a one, this is a two, and then it's going to start to fall apart, okay? Uh, so that doesn't look good either. Even though this is a bullish structure in of itself, okay? Uh, when, again, if it's pointing one way, it's going to do the other, usually. So you could have a one, two, three. That's possible. And then you can have, make a double top, and then down you go. Right. That's possible. But for right now, uh, the way I look at it, this is a one, this is a two, and then three coming to the downside. Uh, they're going to look at the uh, New York Composite Index, head and shoulders, test the previous height. It failed, came back up here, failed again, got the neckline. Uh, this doesn't look healthy uh, at all either. You take a look at China. It's got this uh, rising wedge, lower lows. Uh, it's fully uh, formed. And what do I mean by fully formed? In order for a structure to be valid, it has to have three waves and it has to be um, um, validated, right? So you have the hook here. So um, this is more for my, my subscribers. They know what I'm talking about. One, two, three, and then here's the hook, okay? So now this is starting to fail. You know, again, can you make an argument that one more up? Yes, absolutely you can. And then what's the targets? Well, the targets are somewhere up here, right? 15.5. But this is, again, it's an ending wave if this were to happen. It's an ending wave. So, again, you look at it as a one, two, and then three down. That's more likely than not what's happening. Japan, right? Broke out a little bit. No no follow through. Looks weak as shit. Uh, You can see it right up here. 
know, something small like this, you're like, well, 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 what does that matter? Well, <laughs> if you understood how to trade real charts, uh, you would know that matters, okay? And it doesn't look good right now. Um, so keep an eye on this one as well, Nifty 50. Everything is great. They're reducing taxes. They're reducing uh, interest rates. They want to meet some target of, you know, uh, GDP that's very high. Um, definitely, they have their work cut out for them. Uh, as you can see, there's that area of weakness, right? And then, boom, came down, popped back up, tested the previous high. Let me move all this stuff out of the way. Tested the uh, previous high. What happened? Boom, it failed. Uh, and then came back down, broke this structure now, which is a structure below a structure. This is broken. Then you went into this bullish flag, and this is what I mean. When, when you understand charts, okay, if the structure is pointing downwards, what you're going to get is a move to the upside, right? But it doesn't mean that, oh, we're off to the races, uh, hardly. It means the one, two, and we're looking for more downside, okay? And I don't think it has so much to do with India than it just has to do with world uh, growth slowing. And obviously the same thing with the U.S., right? It's not about the U.S. The U.S. is, a, is okay, we're doing fine. But, you know, we're only 25% of global GDP and the other 75% matters. So when you start getting global PMIs and ISMs and everything start to weaken, well, that's going to affect the U.S. Uh, to think otherwise, uh, I think it's just it's just stupid. So, you know, uh, taking a look at Germany, sure enough, head and shoulders, right? We have this declining uh, uh, trend line. It's got a wedgy looking thing. It's a structure below a structure. And what, what does that mean? Well, you have this big structure in here, breaks down, creates that pressure right under here, and then you look for the next downside move, right? And now, uh, as of last week, we've confirmed the right shoulder, okay? Boom, there it is. So, you know, you can get another move up, but ultimately we're looking for more downside. Uh, this is dual resistance now up here, and also down here is the next target. So first target is obviously here, the uh, support area. And then once that's tagged, then we're going to look for here. And then once that's tagged, we're going to come down here and then go from there. All right. Uh, taking a look at the emerging markets. Okay. There it is down one, two, and now we're just drifting away. Not looking all that well. Take a look at fags, you know, and again, you know, when, when you when you're telling me, well, look at 2015 and 16, we had the PMI recession and we had the rig count come down and there were people in the north. Like when you start telling me crazy shit like that and I'm listening to you, and I'm like, oh, fuck me. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. You stop saying that shit. But it's not a recession. Well, yeah, it's not a recession now because the shit you're telling me is backwards looking. We, we need forward looking stuff. And again, when you go back to 2015 and 16, it was such a very nice uh, channel going up with the market leaders. What has happened since 2018? Market leaders have started to fall apart. They started to weaken. They got very, very big trillion dollar companies and market caps and so on, you know. So what would happen? Well, you got a big drawdown, big pop, failed, failed again, created a structure below a structure created another structure below a structure, failed again. We're now down, what, 12% from the 12% uh, from the highs, okay? Much more than the market, right? Market is down, what, 6 7%, whatever, and 6%, I think, right? So when the market leaders start to fall apart, where are you expecting, you know, the leadership to come from? You know, Procter & Gamble's, GE? I mean, give me a fucking break, right? So you're sitting here telling me about, oh, look at the job numbers. Yeah, okay, job numbers are great. I, you know, jolts, yes, yes, market, uh, historic records left, right, and center. Why the fuck are we slowing down? Well, you know, the MMT tards. Oh, you know, well, we need more deficits. For fuck, you have a trillion dollar deficit. We need a job guarantee. Well, what the fuck do you think a trillion dollars does? <laughs> right? It's a job guarantee. It's a trillion dollars. You know how many jobs that creates? And if you look at total spending, which is what, $5 trillion, whatever it is, that's a job guarantee. Uh, but, you know, you, you got these idiots who are just telling you all this stupid shit, and, and, and you're supposed to take them serious. How the fuck are you supposed to take them serious when they don't know what they're talking about? 
they're trying to sell a job guarantee and the labor shortage. I mean, are you an economist or what the fuck are you? Like, do you look at the data or do we just run around like a religious nut job and a cult and say, well, no, things are bad. Things are always bad. We need this. We need that. We need free this. We need free that. Yeah, well, fuck, everybody wants free shit, <laughs> you know? It just doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so, um, again, last week, what happened? Uh, this broke, okay? And this, this was an area of more or less uh, support or whatever you want to call it. But this is a uh, one time, two times, three times, four and five times try to go up. And it's not, it's not doing it, all right? So the first target, again, is right here. Okay, 31 uh, doesn't mean anything to you guys, but it does to us. All right, so this is the first target, and the next target is all the way down here. Okay, so uh, just so you know, this down here was a 34% pullback. So um, if I'm right, it's going to be a it's going to be a long way down. When you look at the other fags, the Chinese ones, um, and those are the market leaders. Uh, you see again that these guys are down 48 percent, uh, and no recession has even begun. <laughs> so, uh, you know that looks ugly. Um, so, whatever, doesn't look good. Uh, take a look at uh, uh, real estate. Okay, where is it at? Previous highs. Okay, broke out a little bit here. Uh, you think that's bullish? Mm. Uh, what do you want to tell me about high housing? You know, more likely than not, this is going to reverse back down. Okay, that's the way it usually works. Same thing here, right? Broke out, broke the top, okay, and then came back down. So now we're going to break the top, and guess what? We're going to come back down. That's the way that works. Oil, 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 oil. Oh, no, you don't understand oil is the EIA report and, you know, having special insight of the EIA report and this report and he said and she said and green new energy and blah, 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 oh, the amount of stupid shit. Uh, you know, even even geopolitical fucking risk couldn't even push the, the market up for a couple of days. Imagine, what does that tell you, right? So right back down in this larger area. That's ultimately going to resolve to the downside. Uh, $50 is the first target, and then 42 is the second target. Okay, and then we'll we'll figure it out from there. But this does does not instill confidence in the economy or uh, stocks right now. It's just not looking good. Gold. Who would ever thought that negative interest rates are going to push gold higher? <laughs> no, no, it's money printing. <laughs> yeah, well. And now it's negative interest rates. So um, here's the way this looks, right? Nice little channel. One, two, three, up. Starting to fail. Bull flag might get one more up. Uh, but uh, the next uh, more likely than not area that this is going to end up is somewhere down here. You get a bounce, get a top of top, and then we'll look for the downside. All right. Uh, and if you think you're going to buy gold uh, because uh, the recession, is, it's, it's going to protect you from the recession, uh, I would not make that bet. Okay. Commodities overall, uh, you know, looking like shit, right? Where's where's the growth? Where's the economic growth? Where's all the the buying of commodities? Well, this look like, this is looking like it's going to start falling apart. So. Uh, what am I doing here? So you got, you got again, one down, two, and then you're going to look for the next move down, three. So this is looking like crap. All right, for my Bitcoin subscribers, you guys are always asking me stuff. Nothing to do in Bitcoin, okay? Um, everybody, and the other ones, oh, you know, Bitcoin is worthless, going to zero. It is worthless but it's not going to zero. Uh, so until it reaches this area of support, which is around 7,000, um, which coincides with this area of support, uh, don't get too bearish on Bitcoin, okay? Uh, look for the bounce once it gets down here. I think it's going to fool a lot of people. Uh, so 
be ready for it. Be, it's not going to just die out, especially with with risks in global economy. Lastly, we're going to end it up with um, with bonds. Okay, there's just an acceleration to the downside uh, on yields. Okay, uh, you got to pop here and then just start to fail. All right, this had the potential to to start pushing much higher, didn't happen. Now, here's here's the problem. When you um, well before that, okay, somebody's talking about fucking channels. There's no fucking channels here. All right, no 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 no. There's channels. It's the uh, 167 area. This is the important thing. It's 160. You know, right in here. This is what I'm talking about. This is a channel right in here. There's, there's no. <laughs> it's not a channel. Okay. Um, <laughs> 167 is an important area. Where the fuck do people come up with this shit? The only area uh, that is important is down here. Okay. It's one. What is it? One. Uh, 32 okay and we don't even know if that's going to hold we don't we have no clue if that's going to hold okay because last time it didn't hold the 138.9 area so if this continues to come on down uh, you know don't be surprised don't be surprised in the least now here's the problem two problems one when you get what i call a limp dick this looks like a limp dick right it just accelerates to the to the downside all right, when you get a limp dick formation, you get pops, all right? You get pops like this, all right? What the hell is going on? Hold on, stand by. Stay on this page, all right? All right, so you can see this limp dick, right? It's a limp dick, limp dick comes down, it accelerates to the downside, and then pops, okay? This time around, unlike the other one, if you start getting higher interest rates and this starts to pop okay more likely than not the market is going to fall apart and the reasons are as i explained that if right or if rates start to rise okay that's going to make stocks less valuable and if you're not going to get earnings growth or you're not going to get multiple expansion um then every the whole the whole thing starts to unravel okay now if they do it gently which usually they don't based on this structure okay um, if they do it gently it's a different story but uh, the way I look at it is if you get a pop like this and everybody's like yeah we need those higher rates well you get those higher rates you're gonna you're gonna start seeing fucking everything start to fall apart that's my my forecast that's what I think is gonna happen so be careful what you wish for and before you tell me well it didn't happen here last time yeah this is much different economy today okay much different economy today than it was back here all right so when you're six percent from all-time highs uh, everything is firing on all cylinders tr trillion dollar deficits everything is looking great everything should be you know doing what it's supposed to do and it's not doing it well you got to ask yourself why and then if higher interest rates do come then that's going to make things not as good and then when they're not as good and there's not a lot of potential for the upside everything starts to fall apart and if you take a look at the aggregate bond uh, etf all-time highs okay it broke down popped back up probably going to make a lower low start breaking down from this uh, uh, massive rising uh, price action and if this starts to fall then uh, qe is coming and we gotta suppress interest rates again again once you let that bag out of the out of the uh, when <laughs> the cat out of the bag then everybody just expects it and if you don't do it then you know you're just a bad person and you're against humanity blah 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 anyway so that's it for this video be very very careful uh, it's time to be cautious in the market we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow but you know there is uh, there's nothing wrong with being a little bit cautious all right take care of yourselves
come down to patreon.com slash real macro you can get more deeper understanding uh, live chat 24 hours a day uh, you can ask questions you you'll see me trade live and uh, that's it all right take care bye bye before this battle is over the world will know that few stood against many